Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, Stowe Math proudly presents to you today, Probability. And here is the man himself right now. Give a round of applause for Mr. Stowe. Waiting on your applause. Still can't hear you. Mr. Stowe. Look, he's not going to show up until you cheer. Uh, 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 okay, I guess that's what I get for doing my own intro to literally no actual audience. Um, hey, got a microphone. Uh, yeah, hit hit the hit the intro. Do 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 do. Do math. All right. So, uh, thank you for that wonderful intro. That's uh, no problem. Um, we are going to study today uh, an introduction to probability. Speaking of intros, um, so probability, and you've done probability before. It's the odds or the chances that something happens. Well, there's a couple things to talk about with probability, so we'll start here. Probability, we're going to start with a statistical question. We're going to talk about biases first. So if you're given a question such as this one, and I am not expecting you to be able to read that, so I'll read it to you. It says, Johnny wants to survey and find the option the majority of 7th grade students want to take when it comes to returning to school. So with a question like this, if you were given options such as, I don't know, Johnny surveys every third person in the lunch line, or Johnny surveys his homeroom class, or Johnny puts a uh, random survey in every seventh locker, or Johnny surveys the baseball team, all of those will give you an answer, and Johnny will get some sort of uh, answer there. But none of those are necessarily the best case when Johnny could simply survey every class in the hallway, in his seventh grade hallway. See what I mean? So when you go back to the lunchroom, well, maybe some kids aren't in the lunchroom, or maybe it's a school where multiple grades eat together at the same time, or when he surveys his homeroom. Well, that's just one of the seventh grade classes. Assuming Johnny's even in seventh grade, or every seventh locker, not everybody has a locker, or maybe he does it on the wrong hallway. And what else is the choices? Um, that's what I get for not writing it down. <laughs> oh, the baseball team? You know, I mean, if it's like our seventh grade, nobody's on the baseball team because there's not one. Ouch. Why not? Anyways, we'll, we'll talk about that another time. And uh, But congratulations to those of you guys that do club. I just wish we had a team. Or um, the choice where he actually surveys every classroom on the seventh grade hallway you give everybody a shot sure there's things to roll into uh into um take account for such as what if kids are absent or what if they don't treat the survey right you know there's all those things to take into account but it's the most fair of the choices that's why getting on my little soapbox here you have to be careful what you hear on the news or see on facebook or twitter or whatever you look at because people can make things look very good and they could say they have all kinds of data and they you know surveyed people but you know surveys aren't always reliable as they are on the family feud we just surveyed a hundred men here and we'd like to find out what you think is the best answer <laughs> at least they're honest right so anyways that's that then we have a combination question again a lot of reading here I don't expect you to read that I'll read it to you Stu has a donut shop Hidden in a restaurant. Now, what kind of a man named Stu would hide a donut shop in a restaurant? Doesn't make sense. You can order regular or wholeless, chocolate, vanilla, or strawberry, and glazed or dry. So we've got three options here. We've got the regular or wholeless. That's one of the choices we have. We've got chocolate, vanilla, or strawberry. That's another of the choices. And then we've got glazed or dry. That's the other choice. How many combinations are there? So you can do this two ways. You can make a tree diagram, which works fine here, but even this small amount of options got really tight. 
So I've got regular and whole list. For regular, we could do chocolate, vanilla, strawberry. For whole list, we could do chocolate, vanilla, strawberry. And then for each one of these, the chocolate, the regular chocolate could get glazed or dry. The regular vanilla glazed or dry. The regular um, strawberry glazed or dry. And you get the point, but I'm halfway there, so let's finish. Holus can holus chocolate can get glazed or dry. Holus vanilla glazed or dry. Holus uh, strawberry glazed or dry. And you count your options here, and there are twelve. Or you can do it the most, the much easier and efficient way. By you had two options: regular or holus. That's two times our three options of vanilla chocolate strawberry. That's three times. Are two options of glazed or dry. Two times three times two, 12 options. Same answer, a lot less time. That's the method you want to use right there. Okay? And then we've got two big words when it comes to probability. Theoretical and experimental. So theoretical probability is the probability of time something should happen. If I've got a coin, we've got heads or tails. If I flip it, I should get heads half the time, technically. Two options, one's heads. So the probability of heads is uh, one half. That's also very consistent, right? It's one half heads, one half tails every time, no matter what. Experimental is the probability something uh, should happen given an experiment. For example, let's say I take that same coin and flip it ten times. Seven times I get heads, three times I get tails. My experimental probability for heads is seven tenths. Theoretically, it should be one half, but my experimental probability is seven tenths. This goes back to what I said earlier. You can't trust what statistics say on the news slash online slash whatever. You gotta, you gotta be sure. So the more times I flip that coin, the more times you run an experiment, the closer it gets to theoretical every time. If I was to sit here and flip that coin 500 times, I'm not saying I'll have 250 and 250. But I'm saying I should be close, a lot closer than the 10 times. That's not to say that out of 10 times I won't get 5 and 5, but it's rare. Now, if I flip that coin 10,000 times, I should be close to 5,000 and 5,000. Does it mean I'm perfectly going to be there? No. But I should be closer and closer to that 50% theoretical. Okay? So, let's say I have this bag of marbles. And you can't see it well, so I wrote it to the side. I've got four blue, two red. And I asked, hey, what is the probability of red? Well, there's two red out of six total, two out of six, it's one third. That's theoretical. Now let's take that same bag of marbles and say we drew a hundred times and got 43 blue and uh, 57 red. Then my probability for red there will be 57 out of 100. That's experimental. Now I made these numbers up. Honestly, you probably should have gotten more blue than red. But I just wanted to show you that experimental probability is based off of the experiment, not what it theoretically should be. Okay? So be careful with those. And that is uh, it for our quick intro into probability. As always, if you have any questions, please let us know. Leave a comment, share the video, hit the like, thumbs up, ring the bell, all that stuff. Thank you to those guys that have been watching this, and let's keep it up. Um, all right, so uh, if that's all we have to do, then let's uh, hit the outro. Do 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 do